products. Sales are at the heart of most organizations. After all, we need to make money to stay in business. So unless you're in the business of accepting money for nothing, in which case count me in, you probably have some sort of product or service to sell. In Microsoft CRM, we have the ability to manage the products we sell using what's known as the product catalog. So in our Outlook client, if we come over to the left and expand Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and then click on settings, and then we'll choose product catalog, in here is where we'll find all things related to our products. Now, one thing I will tell you right off the bat that there is a structured approach for creating your products. And in case you miss it, it does tell you to create your product catalog in this order, starting with discount lists, followed by unit groups, price lists, and finally products. So we'll start creating our products by looking at discount lists first. Now a discount list is what we can use to offer our products and services at a discounted price, depending on the quantity purchased. So it offers an incentive to your customers to buy more products. So for argument's sake, let's say we sell chocolate bars for a dollar each. If a customer buys eight of them, well, that'll obviously be $8 in total. But we might decide to offer a discount if the customer buys 10 or more. Maybe they'll get 10% off if they buy 10. But what if they reach another quantity bracket that we've set? What if they buy 20 chocolate bars? Maybe we'll give them 20% off. Now we can also use this discount list as the basis for promotional products where the product might be given away free as a one-time promotion. Now in the case of our chocolate bars, we may have just produced a brand new flavored chocolate bar and we wanna test out the market. So we're giving away a free sample. Well, we could do that as well with Microsoft CRM. Now obviously at this point, we don't have any discount lists. So let's click on the new button. And firstly, we'll need to provide a name and a type. So let's stick with our chocolate bar example. So we'll enter in a name. I'm just going to call it Choc Bar Discount. And we'll leave the type here at percentage rather than a fixed amount. So we'll click on OK. Now we can add in a description of our discount if we like, but we're going to click on the left here with discounts. And then we'll click on the new discount button. And in the new window that appears, we'll need to enter in a beginning quantity and an end quantity, as well as the percentage of money off that we'll be offering. So in our example of the chocolate bars, we said if a customer buys 10 or more, then they'll get 10% off. So the beginning quantity is 10. Well, what about the end quantity then? Well, if our plan was for 10 and 10 only, then we could also use 10 as the ending value as well. But we did say that we might offer an even greater discount for purchases of 20 or more. Well, in that case, anything less than 20 chocolate bars would still only get a 10% discount. So let's put our end quantity at 19. Now in the percentage field, this of course is gonna be 10%. So we'll enter in 10 and we'll click on save and close. Now let's go and add in another discount. So we're gonna click on the new discount button again. And this time we'll set this one to have a beginning quantity of 20. And the end quantity could be whatever you like. Let's set it to say 100. And we'll make the percentage discount 20%. All right, now we'll click on save and close. Okay, so now we've successfully set up our discount list. So let's save and close this. And we'll go back to our settings and we'll click on product catalog again. And the next item in the list here is unit groups. Now a unit group is a way that we can list products based on the increments that they're sold. So continuing with our chocolate bars as our example, we could sell them individually, but they might come packaged in a box of 10 and a box of 50 as well. Now if it's a service that you're selling rather than physical products, you might bill customers based on an hourly rate or perhaps a day's work. So your unit group would be based on time rather than a quantity of product. All right, so let's see how we can configure our unit groups. Now, when we click on unit groups, and here you might be surprised to learn that in this case, we actually do have a default unit configured. Now this default unit, when we double click on it and then select units, we can see that it contains a primary unit with a default value of one. So 
even though CRM defaults to a primary unit of one, this can be a relative value. One might be one chocolate bar. It also could be one day or one hour. Now, if it was an hour and you decided that you wanted to be able to bill customers in half hour blocks, then you'd reference that as 0.5, which of course is half of one. One being one hour and half hour is half of one, which is 0.5. So hopefully that makes sense. So for our chocolate bars example, let's say we only sell boxes of them and a box contains 10 chocolate bars. Well, one in that case could mean one full box of chocolate bars. And if later we decided to sell them separately, then one individual chocolate bar would be 0.1, which of course is a tenth of one. So this primary unit is the baseline by which our quantities are measured. Now in most cases, the default value of one is gonna be fine for whatever it is that you're selling. If it was beer and you sold them separately and as a six pack, then we'd simply go the other way around and then multiply our primary unit by the number of items in the pack, which of course is six. However, if we also sold a case of beer, which is 20 beers to a case, then we could either use a value of 20 or use a baseline as four six packs. All right, so let's add in a few units. And if you don't understand this now, you should once we have some data in here, is that's gonna help you visualize what we're talking about. So let's close this window and we'll go and create a new unit group. Now I'm gonna call this unit group chocolate bar and I'm gonna set the primary unit to one or one single chocolate bar if you like and then we'll click on okay. Now we can also enter in a description of our product in our free text field as well. So I'm just gonna call this one chocolate bar and now we'll click on the units link on the left here and we can see here that our chocolate bar sales are based on one single unit. So we're gonna click on the new unit button. And let's say that we wanna sell a box of chocolate bars and the box has 10 chocolate bars in each box. So for the name, I'm gonna call this box of 10 choc bars. In the quantity field, we'll enter in the value of 10 since there's 10 chocolate bars in the box. And then we'll click on the lookup icon here. We'll select our base unit of one and we'll click on OK. And now we'll click on save and close. And there's our second unit group for our box of 10. All right, well, let's say that we also sell these by the carton, which has 20 boxes in the carton. So we'll click on the new unit button again. I'm gonna call this carton of choc bars. And then we'll come down here and we'll click on the lookup icon again. Now we could base this on a single chocolate bar if we like, but since the carton really contains 20 boxes of chocolate bars, I'm gonna choose the box of 10 chocolate bars and we'll click on okay. And now for our quantity, rather than having a quantity of 200, we could mark this as a quantity of 20 since there's 20 chocolate bar boxes in each carton. And each box contains 10 chocolate bars. So we'll click on save and close and now we have three different unit groups. One for a single chocolate bar, another for a box of 10 chocolate bars, and one for a carton of boxes. And as you can see, we're able to use these units to build practically any configuration of our products. And this also works, by the way, if the amount is less than the primary unit value. So if you wanted to sell half a box of chocolate bars, no problem, simply create a new unit and make it equal to 0.5 of a box. Now, if you're in the habit of breaking them in two pieces, well, that'll simply be 0.5 of a single chocolate bar. So it's pretty straightforward once you know how it all works. All right, well, we're gonna click on save and close and we'll go back to settings and then product catalog. And the third step here is to create a price list. So we'll click on new and we'll need to give our price list a name. I'm gonna call this chocolates. Now we can set a start and an end date if we like. And that's kind of useful for promotions that you may wish to start in the future. For example, we could start it next week and then end it on a specific date. All right, let's click save and close here. 
and we'll go back to settings, then our product catalog, and the final step is to create our products. Now we'll click the new button, and this opens up a new window here where we've got a lot of fields available for us to create our products. Now the first field here is an ID field, which is a free text field that can contain any character, but it is limited to 100 characters in total. So we'll give our product an ID of Choc001, and we'll give it the name of Chocolate Bar. Now we can associate this product with a subject as well, although this is something that we may talk about in other videos, but the short version is that by using subjects, we can categorize our products. Now the next field here is unit group, so we'll select that and we'll choose our chocolate bar and then click on OK. Then we'll click on default unit and we'll select one, as this should be the most common unit that our product will be sold in. Now, in the product type drop down box, I'm going to leave the default here at sales inventory since we're dealing with a physical product here. And that's what most of you will leave this set as. Although, we also have options here for setting up a miscellaneous charge item for things like restocking fees. Now, we could also configure this for a service as well, such as in the case where this product was an hourly rate or a daily charge or something like that. And finally, we can configure a flat fee which is kind of useful for adding shipping or handling charges to any orders. Now the quantity on hand field is rather self-explanatory. This is where we can enter in how many units of this product that we have in stock. So let's say we have a thousand. Now we can also enter in a URL where we can link to more information about this product, such as a web page or a page on our intranet site. Now in the cost section, we can specify up to four decimal places. So we're going to say zero here. And this will mean that our product can't be divided into smaller units. The list price here is where we can set up the list or the retail price for the chocolate bar. So let's set it at $2. We could also set up a standard cost, which is the standard price that we pay for the product or the cost for us to manufacture the product. And finally, we have a current cost field, which allows us to set a different cost based on what the cost is right now. So maybe there's rising costs in the world at the moment for cocoa, and it makes our cost to manufacture this higher. So we could set an alternate price here. So I'm gonna set the list price here to $2. Our standard cost price, which is our cost to buy or make that chocolate bar, I'll set that to $1 and our current cost to $1 as well. Now on the description tab, we're able to add in vendor and product specific information here, such as who our supplier is and things like their part number, as well as the weight and the volume of the product. And like with many of our other windows, we've also got this free text notes section as well. All right, up the top, we're gonna to click on save and close and we'll go back to settings then product catalog. And the final step is to add our product to our price list. So we'll double click on our chocolates price list. And on the left here, we'll click on price list items. And then we'll click on the add price list item button. Now down here next to our product field, we're gonna click on the lookup icon. And we'll choose our chocolate bar and we'll click on okay. Now. Remember that we created a discount list earlier in this video. Well, over on the right here, if we click on the lookup icon, we can add in our discount list there and we'll click on OK. Now in the unit field, we'll click on the lookup icon and we'll add in our single chocolate bar unit and we'll click on OK. Now next we have the quantity selling option whereby we can choose either no control, whole or whole and fractional. And these settings dictate whether or not we're able to sell this product in quantities. Now, if we choose no control, which is the default, then CRM won't enforce any quantity options. If we choose whole, then we can't sell this product in fractions, meaning we can't split it. So for example, if we were selling a CD, we can't split it in two to sell two of them. But if we were selling mulch for the garden, we might need to split that up since we might sell it by a cubic yard or meter and even possibly allow smaller amounts than that.
So if that's the case, then we'd want to choose whole and fractional. So I'm just going to set mine to whole here. And we'll move on to the next field where we can set the pricing method. Now, if you recall not long ago when we configured our product, we were given the option of setting a list price, a current cost and a standard cost. Well, in this drop down box here, we're able to set the price of our product to be based on what those costs are. For example, the default is to use currency amount, which is a fixed amount of money. However, the next option here allows us to set a percentage of the list price. So for example, if our list price was $2, but we don't sell it at full retail, we might like to sell it at 10% off the list price, and that's gonna make the chocolate bar $1.80. Now we can also mark up both our current and standard costs by a certain amount, if that's what we prefer to do, or set a specific margin that we wanna make. So for example, our standard margin might be 20%, so we could configure that here as well. Now if you choose to base your pricing method on one of these other options, let's say we want a certain percent of margin, and let's say 20% for argument's sake, down the bottom here, we can configure a rounding policy as well to round our prices up or down, or to the nearest whole number, such as the nearest dollar. So I'll leave this at none, and we'll click on save and close. Now the final feature of CRM products that you might wanna consider using is substitute products. So we'll close this and we'll come back to settings and then click on product catalog again. And then we'll click on products. Now we'll double click on our product here. And on the left, you can see we've got another option here called substitute. Now this allows us to offer a different product to this one. If this product happens to be unavailable at the time due to situations where perhaps you've run out of stock or it's just been temporarily discontinued. So to use this feature, all you need to do is click on the add existing product button and then locate a different product that you might like to sell in place of this one. So in this video, we've seen how to set up our products, unit groups, discount lists and price lists in CRM4. As you've seen, it's not a terribly difficult thing to do, but obviously, depending on how many products you have, it can take some time to input all of this data into CRM. However, once you have this information in CRM, it will allow you to track and predict revenue based on the marketing and sales efforts that you're also tracking in CRM. We hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.